Um, cool. So thank you for this very nice introduction. And uh, I'm super excited to introduce you to this topic that, let's face it, uh, a year ago I didn't have, didn't have any idea about. So I'm going to bring you on my one-year journey with me. Um, so let's get cracking. So um, like just you heard the introduction. Um, my name is Sebastian Vitales. I build cool stuff. Uh, and I want to talk to you about it. So my journey begins like uh, a few years ago, a long, long time ago in a galaxy far away. I went to a conference and there was a very interesting talk that I was very excited about that promised that you don't need to know, uh, you don't need a PhD to understand machine learning. And obviously I was super excited about it because A, I didn't have any clue about ML, but I really wanted to get into it. Like, hey, there was a promise, like maybe I didn't need to study for five years to do something around ML. The thing is that 10 minutes into that talk, I was so confused, I didn't even know what my name was. I, and it was like immediately like my, my assumption was like, yep, you need a PhD, I'm never touching ML again in my life, you know? That's it, over, you know? But then I was like, okay, I'm not gonna give up. The thing that changed uh, and is happening lately, and I'm sure you're all experiencing that, is like everybody's talking about ChatGPT, AI, ML, like all those things that you're hearing. Um, like I currently live in, De in Denmark, I don't speak any Danish, but like if I'm in cafe, there's like people speaking randomly Danish and I'm like catching up ChatGPT, something, something, like you keep catching it. Uh, I went to uh, get a haircut, right? Like, and my hairdresser got confused. It was like, okay, I'm gonna ask ChatGPT what kind of haircut will go with you. Um, even ChatGPT can help with it, so that's okay. Um, and the thing is like, what changed? Why is everyone now talking again about machine learning? Why, where is this bus coming from? Why is everyone excited? Not just even people in tech, but even like regular people that, that you know, don't, you know, don't use computers for professional stuff, right? And what changed is actually that those machine learning tools became accessible, right? Like suddenly they're like at your fingertips. Suddenly uh, you can go, you know, to open AI and like uh, create a login and then you could start writing prompts and ask questions to the AI. And this is mind blowing. And there is so many different applications, all sort of like image generation, all sort of things happening. But I only have 20 minutes for the talk and, uh, and the organizers like asked me already five times if I'm gonna finish on time. So I'm going to narrow down and only talk about like a very specific thing of the machine learning, especially that I have 20 minutes and I wanna do some live coding as well. So let's stick to that. So the topic of the presentation was search or using machine learning search. And let's face it, everything that we do on the internet begins with search. Right? You wanna listen to music, you search. You wanna watch a movie, you go in shopping, you wanna find some information, you go to Wikipedia, you always search. And, and I mean, you probably think it's like, okay, what's the problem? We've been doing that for decades, um, search works. Well, I beg to differ, right? Like it kinda works, but it could be better. And uh, let me give you an example. So with traditional search, you may face some challenges. So if you went and asked like a traditional search engine, like why do airplanes fly? And maybe you have like a whole database of documents that explain it. Uh, you may get an answer like, why you should fly with expensive airplanes? And it's like, well, I mean, it's pretty good because it matched airplanes, it matched why do and fly and all this. Why is this guy complaining? It's like a perfect match. Well, I mean, in reality, we asked how planes fl fly and we were told to fly with expensive airlines. Well, that, that solves it for me. Thank you. Uh, well, the solution for me is, is kind of like looking for, uh, at, at the question from the semantic point of view. What is the meaning of the question and what sort of answer can I find for you? Right? And actually, if you put this question into Google search, uh, you will get an answer like this. Uh, you go and fi will find the dynamics of flight from NASA. And then in there, the bit that helped us find the answer was like, airplane's wings are shaped to make air move faster over the top of the wing, blah, 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 blah. Like, we don't really have any of the keyword matches, but the meaning's there, right? And that's basically the power of semantic search. So by looking at those two examples and the kind of things that you can get between the two, I mean, the conclusion is pretty straightforward, right? Like we should be going and looking more at the semantic type of search and like using machine learning for it. So how does this work? And uh, a little heads up, you don't need to know it, 
but I think it's pretty cool. Like you find it interesting and I have like a very uh, nice ex explanation that you don't need a PhD to understand it. Maybe it's not for a five years old, like it's more of like a 10 years old explanation. Uh, so uh, just bear with me. So first of all, in the machine learning world, we have this thing called the machine learning models. There's this like black boxes that they are uh, constructed in such way that if you pass in some information into it, it will spit out this thing which we call a vector embedding. Right? A vector embedding is basically like a, an array of numbers. It's just like a bunch of numbers. And in reality, it's like how computers look at data and you look like binary and computers understand, it. oh, this is a piece of information. This is basically what machine learning thinks, right? Like if machine learning looks at a vector embedding, that's how it understands information and data. So if we took our previous uh, two examples that we had between the two results, and we put fly with expensive uh, errors modern fleet paragraph into a uh, into machine learning model, you will get a vector embedding. If you take another paragraph, and we put it again to a machine learning model, we'll get another vector embedding. And, and what these things are, like you can imagine they are like coordinates into, in like a multidimensional space. So think of it more like, um, like you see in this multi, uh, multidimensional space, like uh, dog and wolf that is right on the left hand side. They're really close to each other, right? And the cat is not too far off while the bananas and apples are in completely different place. Uh, and of course, our brains are trained to think in three dimensions, but those machine lear learning models can go into 300 dimensions, thousands or 10,000 dimensions. So they can very, like, understand information in a very detailed way. And the cool thing is now that if I want to do a search, I could take our original query, pass it through the machine learning model, and I get a vector. With that vector, visually to imagine it, uh, we could say like, hey, my information is somewhere here. So any objects that are close to that the new vector position would, would indicate here are the articles where your answer might be. It's really cool, right? And then by looking there, we can then find like, oh yeah, the NASA article was just there. And then we can pass it back. And it's all math, like it's all just like uh, grabbing and calculating those vectors, uh, which is really, really cool. See, so like I think even 10 year olds and people that are not in ML can understand that you don't need a PhD. I think uh, this is pretty straightforward. So there's a bonus thing. Some of those machine learning models, and you probably saw there were some pictures, there was some text. Uh, some of them can understand both text and images, right? They can also understand more, many other things. But in particular, there's one called clip. And if I pass in a paragraph that describes a maxi summer dress and a picture of the, the same dress separately, I, I would get two vectors which are very similar, which basically means that I could use it as well to search through images and text in, in, in however way we want to do. So I could have a database of pictures and I could write in English kind of, or, or any other language. So like, oh yeah, show me a, a picture with a house and a dog and, and a tornado in the background, right? And the, the vector would then help us find that picture later on. Well, if we have in the database. So yeah, we could do images and text in one go and plus many, many other things. So this is a JavaScript event and you're like, probably beginning like, hey, okay, what just, does uh, JavaScript got to do with it, right? So uh, um, let me take you on that. Like now let's talk about the practical stuff. stuff. So if you, have, if you have a JavaScript application, whether your search is done in the back end or a front end, usually you have some sort of JavaScript app and you have a data that you want to be able to search through. Cool, that's the first ingredient we have. Then what you need to do is pick up a machine learning model. Uh, or a vectorizer, as we call them. And, and you don't necessarily have to create your own one. There's companies like OpenAI, you probably know them because of ChatGPT. Uh, there's Cohere, They're, they have these multilingual models that understands like over 100 different languages. Um, we have Hugging Face. Hugging Face, they have like 80,000 machine learning models, right? Uh, recently, Google at Google I.O. launched Palm 2, which also does this job. So you don't have to actually create those. You just uh, basically find, you need to find a model that works for your data, and you're golden. You're all good. So having all this to tie it all up together, and this is why I'm here. I'm wearing a t-shirt from, from Weaviate. Uh, we have an open source vector database. So it's basically a database that takes care of all of it for you, right? Like you say, hey, I want to use this machine learning model. This is my data. Go, right? And now I can write code in JavaScript or many other languages uh, to write my queries or perform many other things. So. 
I want to do some cooking and uh, show you a really cool demo. So, oops, I was not going to do this. So the first demo I have is I have this database with 10 million objects in it. So these are paragraphs from Wikipedia. Uh, and uh, to make it better, each, milli each million is, uh, is a bunch of uh, art articles in different language. So I have some in English, I have some in French, in German, I have some in Hindi, uh, in Arabic, I think there's Japanese as well. So we have like a pretty wide database. Um, so what I can do with it is, I'm not going to be teaching you necessarily like, hey, this is React application, this is how you connect it to the UI. You, you know this stuff, right? So, but what, what you really need to know here is the following. So with v I already have the data in, uh, in my database. So first thing that we need to do is uh, connect to my instance. So this specific instance uh, lives in the cloud. Um, so we have this uh, cloud services where in this case I'm hosting uh, this demo uh, and, and in there I'm passing in the API key of my uh, cloud instance, but additionally, I am using the Cohere API, uh, like an uh, inference uh, service. So basically, I'm telling, like, uh, hey, this is my API key. So if Cohere needs to charge me, they, they know how to find me, right? So I create this client. And with this client, I can start writing code uh, and then writing my queries. So I'm not going to show you how to import the data. In this case, I just want to focus on uh, the querying part. So at the moment, we are using the builder pattern. So I'm, I'm, I'm grabbing a query from based on GraphQL, and then maybe we have with um, class. So my data is in collection called articles. Oh, I should actually probably show you this. So my collection articles is defined to use text to vector here. And then in this case, I want to use this multilingual model from uh, 20, uh, 2022, uh, December. And then also, just so that you're aware, uh, I have properties like text, title, URL, wiki ID, views, et cetera, et cetera, right? So now I'll be using those to, to query through my data. So I want to query my articles. And then we will uh, query, what is it, fields. Uh, and I want to get uh, text, URL, and title. That's cool. And then maybe I want to just get first 10 objects. So if I just run this query, I could maybe search for um, how planes fly. And I'm, at the moment, I'm not doing anything as such. I'm just saying, give me a bunch of random objects, right? OK, that's fine. But now I want to actually do a query. So, and this is the bit where like, I can do machine learning query, query with this one line, right? So I could say with near text, there's, there's different operators as well. And I can pass in concepts. And the concept will be the query that I get from the UI. So this is the query I'm, I'm getting passed in, right? And now, with this one line, I can get articles that, talk, that are related to, fl to flying, right? Um, I can open this, and then this one is, what, is that Italian? Uh, yep, so that's the Italian page on uh, Wikipedia, um, and I found, found that article there. Um, this, is, this is pretty cool. And of course, uh, we can put like many other queries. Uh, the other thing I can do is like I can write it in other languages, right? Musicna uh, instrument. Uh, so this is in Polish, like musical instruments, right? And I'm searching across my database, uh, which is super cool. And if I just want to filter and only show English response, so this is to show you that we could also do traditional database kind of queries. So you could do scalar search. So I could do with. Ah, oh, I need a dot. So with where? Um, actually, I'm not going to type it manually. Uh, where language English? So in this case, I'm just saying, OK, where language equals uh, EN. So this one, this time, I can get English results only, which is pretty cool. The other thing that I can do as, the, as like the next level, I have another collection where I needed to make some changes, and I introduced a generative module, model. 
So this one uses uh, GPT from OpenAI, and I can actually do some extra bits and then do like provide prompts to uh, to the da database to um, to perform some extra operations. So let's try that. So this time the collection is called the Wikipedia, but it's basically the same data. I just didn't have the time to rebuild the other one. Uh, so we're going to skip this one for now, and then maybe I can do with uh, generate. And then in this case, we need, what do we need? Single prompt. Uh, uh, uh. And then I can say, summarize the following in a tweet. And then I'm going to pass text, which is this property. And because I'm using OpenAI this time, I am going to add an API key. So I have it in my, uh, local uh, configuration, and well, let's not run on 10, because that, that is a bit time consuming. So what will happen is we run the query, we get the results, and then we'll pass it on to OpenAI to, to vectorize, and then also I need to do a, a little bit of parsing. So generate single result, nope, not this one, demo. Uh, return generate, it's just like a simple map. I'm, I'm just after this field and I will replace the text. So if I rerun this and run the search, that's going to take, usually takes you know, 10, 15 seconds, but uh, yeah, it takes each of the results and then kind of like create a summarizer. What's really cool, I mean, everything's super cool when I'm talking right now, I summarize the following as a haiku poem. Um, let's save this, and then I can rerun this. And uh, this is, this is mind-blowing. Um, so it takes a while. And we have, we have haiku poems based on the art of <laughs> Ms. Gaussian. Right? All right. The next demo I have for you is you could also do image search. So I have this uh, uh, table, collection, whatever you want to call it, where... Well, this is going to be tiny, but you should be able to see now. So I have like a, a, a folder with like a bunch of actors, right? Famous actors, famous celebrities. And this time I'm using a clip model. So I could, for example, do this where I say, uh, find a celebrity that looks like Brad Pitt. And then boom, we have Brad Pitt, but I'm also always going to return two objects, so not all of them will be perfect. Um, which actor do I look like from the like 100 that I have? And, well, I look like David Tennant and Stan Tucci. They're really going after my baldy here. This is offensive. Uh, but hey, uh, another one, like I have a picture of a meerkat. Um, so, well, actually, Ryan Gosling does look a bit like a meerkat. So that works pretty nicely. And I did the same thing for the conference speakers here. Uh, there's a bit of a running joke when it comes to uh, uh, Jeff Cross. And, and Mike Harrington, they usually get mixed up. At one point, they even swap their profile pictures. Um, if I show you again the, the picture of Jeff, you know, like there is some resemblance between them, them two. And if we want to search for Mishko, that was, a very, that was a different picture of Mishko. We're still able to find it. And this is really, really powerful. Um, and this application I built in Angular. So just to show you this, uh, the little bit on how this is done, we have this image service. So basically the step is, this time I'm using the multi two, like the clip model for the vectorization or to understand our images. And I'm saying like, hey, we'll have name, URL, and image. And then after, then, then I go and import the data. This is not super important. The image search is just this. Basically, when you give me a file to search on, I convert it to base64, and then the query is just like the one you saw before, with the difference being that now I'm doing with near image. So I'm passing this uh, new image as a base64 representation, and boom, I can do the search, right? And you see, like, none of this code makes you, uh, like, requires you to understand how machine learning works underneath. You just have a job to do. And uh, so if in your websites or in your backend systems, maybe, uh, I don't know, you have 
500 million PDFs uh, that your company has been storing for the, f for the last 50 years, and then you could never search through them. Like, you can load them into VB8, uh, and then run, you run them through a machine learning model and then query them. Like, something that was inac inaccessible before, now you can run it. Um, as a bonus, our website, uh, we've added this recently. Uh, so if I do Command K, we actually use uh, vector search in our website itself. So how to delete an object, boom, here is an article uh, in the documentation, right? So these are all really, really cool things. So to summarize, um, anyone can uh, bring AI-based search to, to the web application. Basically, you need your JS application with some data, pick a machine learning model, and a vector database. And uh, with that, and then the, what, like there was like 20, 30 lines of code, uh, you're golden, and then you can use machine learning search for your use. So yeah, that's me. This is our website, this is our Twitter. <laughs> <laughs>